Imperial Navy and its predecessor, the Republic Navy, were some of the largest and most capable naval forces in galactic history, but who was actually responsible for building those ships? Well, today we'll talk about the largest military manufacturer in all of Star Wars. Let's discuss Kuat Drive Yards. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So when I was looking for a video topic to cover today for this video, I was looking back at the sort of catalog of videos I'd made so far, and I was actually kind of surprised to realize that I'd never done a video on Kuat Drive Yards, who are inseparably linked to some of the most powerful and capable navies in galactic history. So I figured today we'll make up for that and discuss Kuat Drive Yards. So let's just jump right in. Kuat Drive Yards is a major corporation in the Star Wars universe, most notable for ship construction. They're up there with some of the other famous ship manufacturers like Corellian Engineering Corporation, which manufactured the CR-90 Corvettes for the Rebel Alliance, among many other ships, and the Mon Calamari Shipyards, which famously made capital ships for the Rebel Alliance during the Galactic Civil War. Kuat Drive Yards itself was most famous for their iconic wedge-shaped vessels like the Star Destroyer behind me, and many of the other vessels that would end up serving with the Republic and later the Empire. In its early days, Kuat became known for manufacturing military vessels for small planetary defense forces, but as an era of peace descended upon the galaxy, that became less necessary. And while Kuat Drive Yards did suffer a bit of a hit, they did still have some civilian models that they were manufacturing, and they were ultimately preparing for more wars in the future. In this period of time, they actually purchased an entire world, the world of Rathana, on which they founded a subsidiary, Rathana Heavy Engineering, which would go on to manufacture a lot of ground equipment, most notably ground equipment for the Grand Army of the Republic. Rathana was very easy to keep secret, so building a massive army's worth of vehicles and armor uh, and putting it somewhere where no one would see it was easiest on Rathana. Now we're not actually going to talk about Rathana here that much because that's a whole nother discussion. Today we're going to focus more on Kuat itself, but I felt like they were worth mentioning. So during this period of time, Kuat Drive Yards had taken a contract to manufacture Venator class Star Destroyers for the new Grand Army of the Republic, something that they took to relatively quickly. It was actually one of two military capital ships designed for the Republic by Kuat Drive Yards themselves, the other being the Arkitans class light cruiser. Both of these vehicles would enter service with the Republic Navy fairly early on in the war, with the Venator having a much larger presence much quicker than the Arkitans, but still, both would become mainstays of the Republic fleet by the midpoint of the conflict. On top of that, once the cat was out of the bag that the Republic had built a massive army, Kuat Drive Yards began picking up some of the slack for manufacturing the vehicles that had been previously manufactured by the much more secretive Rathana Heavy Engineering. These are things like the All-Terrain Tactical Enforcer, or ATTE, and the LAAT gunships. When the Republic transitioned into the Galactic Empire, Kuat Drive Yards followed them, continuing to manufacture Arkitans class light cruisers for the Galactic Empire, while their Venator production lines shifted over to produce newer, more capable capital ships for the Empire, most notably the Imperial class Star Destroyers, which were the most notable design to come out of Kuat Drive Yards in their entire history. During the reign of the Empire, Kuat Drive Yards took over a lot of their walker manufacturing as well, most notably building the all terrain assault transports, or AT-ATs, which would be used in battles across the galaxy, but most notably places like Hoth, where they would play a crucial role in winning those engagements. Engagements that occurred because the Imperial fleet in orbit made entirely out of Kuat Drive Yard capital ships of the Imperial class were blockading a planet. The equipment manufactured by Kuat Drive Yards became basically the entirety of the Imperial military, and it became one of the most important manufacturing centers within the galaxy for Imperial leadership. During that time, they were producing most of the vessels for the Imperial Navy, once again of the Imperial and the Architans class, and most of the heavy ground equipment deployed by the Empire, things like the at, -AT. Following the Battle of Endor and the collapse of the Galactic Empire, Kuat quickly became a target for the New Republic, as they were continuing to manufacture vehicles for the Empire. However, as the Empire's leadership began to fragment, leadership on Kuat did the same, and when the Battle of Kuat occurred within a year after the Battle of Endor, the planet fell to forces of the New Republic, as leadership of Kuat Drive Yards formally surrendered to the New Republic, handing over much of their manufacturing capability to the former Rebel Alliance. 
But that wasn't the end of Kuat Drive Yards. They would actually split off into several smaller companies with the end of the Empire. The New Republic put some pretty heavy restrictions on Kuat following their rise to power, seeing as Kuat was very closely tied to the Imperial Military Industrial Complex. As such, the company was forced to fragment. One of these fragments would become Kuat and Trala, which would go on to manufacture the vessels for the First Order and other Imperial Remnant factions, and continue operating well into the next period of galactic history, and be active at the time of the First Order Resistance War. Beyond this point, though, we don't know what happened to what was left of Kuat. That's where galactic history basically leaves us. And while they likely took a hit with the fall of the First Order, and I'm sure they'll go through a fairly similar uh, series of events after the New Republic resumes control of the galaxy with the collapse of the First Order, um, what comes next for Kuat is still unknown, and we'll have to just wait and see. But that's the story of Kuat Drive Yards and their crucial role in galactic history, manufacturing warships for some of the most capable navies. They were instrumental in the transition from the Republic to the Empire, and if you'd like to learn about how the Republic Navy transitioned into the Imperial Navy, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the New Republic should have cracked down, or at least kept a closer eye, on the subsidiaries of Kuat Drive Yards following the Battle of Kuat, or do you think it makes sense for them to be like, you're fragmented, you're a bunch of smaller corporations, you can't do that much damage. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.